Hi, this is the first tutorial for actually using Max, and we're assuming that you already have Max installed on your computer. If you don't, go back and watch the how to install Max on your computer uh, uh, tutorial that I did before this one. Today we're going to learn the very, very basics of Max, and so we're going to start out with some very simple things that are uh, will help you get through the semester and our good housekeeping. The one thing is that we need to open uh, Max and put it on the dock. So we're going to open a Finder window, go down to the Applications to Max 6. I have Max 5 on my computer too. I want Max 6, the new one. I just installed it. Select the Max application right here. Double click it, and this window pops up. I just installed this yesterday, and so I haven't actually authorized it yet. I'm still waiting to get my license key. When you get your license key, click the Authorize button and proceed and enter the uh, key number that they send you. But in the meantime, we have 29 days left, and we'll just go with the demo. So let's get started here. There's the demo. Max is up and running. I like to go down here on a Macintosh. I can't really say how this works on a PC, but on a Macintosh you go down here, push the control button, and click on this, and you get these options. Uh, you can keep it in the dock, you can open it, log in, etc. I just want to keep it in the dock. That's already checked, so good. Now it's, it'll be down here whenever I need it. You'll be using Max quite a lot this semester, so I recommend you put it there. When Max starts up, you get this window. Um, this lets you go to all the different places um, associated with Max 6. Here, you can start a new, uh, you can open a new patcher. A patcher is really just a Max file, though one of the great things about Max, and somewhat confusing, is that you can put patchers inside other patchers. We'll get to that much later, but essentially a file in Max is called a patcher. Okay, These other things are uh, different resources that you can use for Max, uh, toolboxes that other people have built, documentation tutorials, video tutorials, support groups, what other people are doing with Max, forums for when you get to the really really tricky stuff someday, and inevitably the online shop, which you've probably already been to. But if you haven't, and you need to get your key, this is probably the place to go. Today, we're just going to open a new patcher. And there it goes. So this is the basic Max window. And I'm just going to kind of move it around here so you can see it. Over here, we have our workspace, where you'll actually build your patcher. And over here, we have a sidebar menu. If you look. Um, around in here there's all the different objects and things that we use with Max. Okay, The first order of business of course is to save the file. What I recommend is going to the documents section of your computer documents and then I've already created a folder called Max Jitter and one for 1383 class. And I'm just going to call this Patcher1. Read. Okay. If you could label yours the same way but use your own last name, um, it's a good habit to get into in case you're handing these in because if I get, you know, 20 things named patcher2, it's not going to be helpful for grading. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and save that. And now we have patcher1 read unlocked. The reason that it's unlocked is because when you're editing or creating something in Max, you're in edit mode. When you're running it as an application, you're in locked mode. And that is controlled down here with this little button. So there's locked and there's unlocked. We'll get back to it, but right now we want to work in unlocked. Make sure your patcher's unlocked. I'm going to maximize this window so you can see it better. 
and then we're looking at our workspace and over here make sure you're on the Explorer tab are the objects that you use in Max. We'll just uh, pull some, the three basic ones out here right away. This is a message this is a comment and this is a blank object. Now in reality all things in Max are objects. They do something but these have very specific purposes and these are pr the rest of these are pre-made objects in uh, Max. So we have a blank object here and we're going to tell it what kind of object it is today and we'll start typing M E and you see the word metro comes up that's a metronome and this tells us what direction we've already started going and it gives us the opportunity to select one so we're gonna select metronome and then we're gonna put in a space because after we tell it what it is we want to give it what's called an argument Max objects can have a number of arguments depending on what object they are. <clears throat> the metronome object, I believe, can only have one, and that is the interval for how often it sends out a pulse. And we are going to write 500. And then click outside the box or hit return, and there it is. The, the object box, which is really the most important box in Max, will turn a sort of greenish gray around the outside and it will have inlet and outlets on it appropriate to what the object does. If you type the wrong thing in here, and I'm just going to make a little example here, there we go, Metri. The box will turn sort of orange inside, like it's rotten. That means it doesn't understand what you're saying. So go back in here click on it until you can get the cursor at the right point and fix that. Make Metro 500, click outside the box and now it looks fine. <clears throat> now, looking at um, Max, you'll always see inlets on the top and outlets on the bottom. Um, if you move your cursor, let me just zoom in here so you can see closely, if you move your cursor near them, they'll give you a hint as to that's useful. They'll give you a hint as to what they do. So this starts or stops the metronome depending on the message that it receives, and this sets the metronome time interval depending on what message it receives. And this is the outlet, meaning information is going to come out, and it outputs ticks from the metronome. So um, we're going to, by clicking on the outlet of this box and then dragging over here, as soon as you see that little blue circle, that means it'll connect even if I let it go here. Bonk. Okay. And then we're going to type in this box 1000. Okay. Now, we were talking about this is an object. object. This over here is called a message box and I'm gonna put this over here. Okay and you actually see these written under here and then finally I'll drag one over for itself and say <clears throat> hi I'm a comment box. Okay, comment boxes don't do anything other than give you information inside your patcher. It's a good reminder of what you're doing. If you're programming in C, they're also called uh, remarks, but it's the same idea. They, you put these in, they have no function at all inside the patcher except to tell you, the person looking at them, what's happening. So this is a message, this is an object, and this is a comment box. 
Um, over here are some other pre-made objects that we have. One is a toggle, and that's a switch that's sort of like you push it once and it turns on. You push it again and it turns off. And we drag that over there, and we'll scroll over this output here. And it outputs either a 1 or a 0 when the toggle is set, which is precisely what the metronome needs to know whether to turn off or on. These are called patch chords, by the way. And if you scroll over them, you get this little arrow. If you click on it, you, can, you get a variety of things that you can do. One of them is route them, and it makes this sort of... <clears throat> squared off thing. It'll be more obvious with this one. Route the patch cord. Oh, how neat. It'll avoid all the other objects that you have there and uh, make your make your patcher look nice and neat. There are those of us who really appreciate that. And then the last thing I'm going to drag over here is the button. If the button gets an input on on its inlet, it'll cause it to turn yellow. If you press on it, it will turn yellow, and it outputs what we call a bang, which is uh, a sort of impulse that sort of uh, activates things in Max MSP. I'm going to put it like this so I can route my patch. Oh, uh, you can also, if you move your mouse around this corner over here, when you get that symbol, it means you can make things bigger. Oh, that's nice. Look at that big button. So there we go, zoomed back out, and now we pull a patch cord over to it, and we route our patch cord so that everything looks neat. Okay, there we go. So this, oh, and we save. There we go. Okay, so this is probably the simplest patcher that you can make, but we can't do anything yet with it. Um, because we're in the edit mode. So we're going to go down here to the right hand corner and click on this box which looks like a little lock. And when we click on it, I'm going to zoom back out before I click on it. When we zoom back out and click on it, everything's locked down. I can't move anything anymore as you can tell. It's just sitting there. If I click on this, I get a yellow light but that's it. Um, so, if I click on this though, this is the toggle, and I turn it on. Now the metronome, with the argument of 500, which means 500 one thousandths, is flashing every half a second. Okay? Now, <clears throat> this message here, if we were to send it, if we were to click on this, it's going to send the message 1000 to the metronome and that'll be 1,000 over 1,000 or one second. So let's see the change there. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that is the simple patcher. Now we can click on the toggle again and stop. Click on the toggle again to start. Okay, and that is the first patcher in Max, and I'll be back with the next video. Thanks.